Hello friends, I hope you're having a lovely day, evening, wherever you are in the world and I myself am wrapping up the night with some much needed tea and I thought I'd just hop over and talk to you a bit about reading and how to become a more consistent reader. In my time as a graduate student of international relations and then law, I have spent and continue to spend a lot of time reading heavy textbooks and treatises, legislative law, public policy papers. Over the years, I've also been an avid reader of fiction and nonfiction. So in a way, having dedicated both leisure time and a chunk of my academic and professional life to reading, uh, I've come to learn that reading, despite having a busy professional and or personal life, is doable. It is also manageable and it can even be very pleasant. Recently, a friend of mine asked for recommendations on how to get back into the habit of reading. They expressed that they were an avid reader during college years, and now since having children, they have had difficulty making time for books. Acknowledging that they are better served reading books as opposed to hanging out on social media or binge-watching Netflix, and despite feeling that books in this time period of their life uh, were daunting, they were nonetheless looking to realistically hold themselves accountable. So in the spirit of wanting to help out and perhaps uh, by offering my own personal insight being of use to my friend, I uh, came up with a few pointers on how to become a more consistent reader. These pointers are in no way exhaustive, but they have helped me personally become a consistent reader. Uh, and that's something that I think is doable for anyone out there willing to do so. So with that said, my very first pointer would be do not be burdened by bad books. The strategy here should be uh, to start as many books as you can with the intention of finishing only some of them. And that should not be something that uh, frightens you or holds you back from being introduced to new books. But this means dropping books that you do not enjoy. For many of us, reading ties back to school days when we were assigned books to read. And under this lens, it's easy to see reading as a chore, much like homework was once back then. So here's your reminder, do not make reading a begrudging chore. It's okay not to finish a book. And there is no need to grind yourself down to the very last sentence of a book if you come to realize that the book is simply not for you. Some, by the way, are not even for anyone. <laughs> Here, I think it's important to take a pause to ask yourself why it is that you read. For example, I read A for enjoyment and B to add a sense of value to my life. I think reading makes us better observers, clearer thinkers, and ultimately stronger writers. So if you find books that you enjoy, you'll be quicker to build reading into a habit that you find enjoyable. Having built reading into an enjoyable habit, you will be quicker to find and absorb books that add value to your life. Being exposed to books this way, you will have a better barometer on whether a particular book is ultimately worth your time. My second pointer and something that I've consistently been trying to do a better job of is invest in a Kindle or an Audible subscription. I used to be incredibly snobbish when it came to Kindle and digital books and audiobooks until I gave it a try and tested it out myself. I came to realize that my irrational fear of being uh, somehow detached from my beloved fiction paperbacks was unfounded. I still love my paperbacks despite doing a better job nowadays of reading on Kindle and listening uh, to audiobooks on Audible. I also realized that every excuse I had for not reading uh, during a given pocket of free time was easily addressed and solved thanks to digital technology. If I was traveling and didn't have room in my backpack or in my carry-on for a book, Guess what? Kindle became a very lightweight fix to that as it easily fits into my jacket's pocket. If it's the middle of the night and I don't want to turn the lights on but want to get some reading in, guess what? Kindle is there with its ability to be read in the dark with backlight. If I don't want to trek to the library or the bookstore or wait for my order to arrive in the mail, my goodness, Kindle instantaneously provided access to some great titles and this was particularly relevant during the pandemic when I was just in lockdown mode the entire time. I also want to do a quick plug for uh, free apps like Libby that provide access to free digital and audio copies of certain books. You, I believe you just input your 
um, local library card number or information and bam, there you have it. You have books at the ready, easily accessible to you. These same concepts apply to audiobooks. It's been such a treat to be able to run on errands or go out shopping or you know make dinner and breakfast and be able to simultaneously listen and catch up on some reading. The app I use, Audible, has introduced me to some great titles and narration, particularly their short stories and plays that are nar narrated by some very fascinating and captivating voices. By the way, this is in no way sponsored by any of these companies. I just, these are just my two cents on what I consider tools that have upped my reading and productivity. The third pointer I've come to become very acquainted with is building a daily reading routine. Reading is a skill, but this is very reassuring as a reminder because it means becoming a reader is attainable for almost anyone. Becoming a consistent good reader starts with building a solid reading habit. Sometimes it's all in the baby steps that you take. I found that personally for me, reading before bedtime provides such a nice um, end to my day, but it also allows me to treat that time of day as sort of a do not disturb sacred moment between my own inner thoughts and myself and the book that I'm reading and experiencing. Um, if that means putting my phone away in another room, then that needs to be done. If it means getting an alarm clock that's detached to my phone so as to avoid disturbances and distractions, then that needs to be done. Find a little tidbit, a little part of your day that you think would work on a daily basis and go for it. Like I said, for me, those are evenings before or nighttime before bed. And um, I have friends who use their lunch breaks for reading and get so much reading done on a daily basis. So it all just depends on your personal preference. As long as you set the intention to build reading into a habit, a daily practice. My fourth pointer would be to make the book your own inside and outside. Books are not museum artifacts. At least your books are not museum artifacts. They are meant to be used, annotated, highlighted, underlined, effectively just well-loved. By doing these things, I've been able to uh, remember lessons learned from the books and build on my knowledge base. Annotating has also provided me a visual record of the books that I've read and it's very nice to over the years just flip through some of the thoughts that I may have had years ago in university days or even earlier in high school days. I use a journal to keep track of my books that I've read and I also take book notes in, um, in physical journals. I've started incorporating digital note-taking uh, using an app called Notion, which I found very helpful in compartmentalizing various uh, pages of information and somehow being able to synchronize them all into easily accessible cataloging systems. Additionally, I use um, Readwise, which is an app that collects all my annotations from my Kindle and all my highlights and notes, and it syncs them all into one place. So I have a convenient log that can then be resurfaced and to provide uh, important lessons or reminders on things that I've annotated. This helps one build a second brain outside of yourself, if you like to think of it that way. My fifth pointer would be to cultivate accountability buddies. For me, Instagram and the, the world of Bookstagram on, on the Instagram platform connects me to a supportive community from whom I can learn and with whom I can share my reading progress. It also makes accountability so much easier, which in turn helps me attain uh, my own reading goals. At the end of the day, seeing other people discuss books is also an uplifting way to feel inspired. If you are in need of an accountability buddy, my ears are open and attentive to you. And you can find me on Instagram or shoot me an email or drop a comment down below. And I'd love to discuss all things bookish with you. If you have any tips on how to become a more consistent reader, I'd love to hear from you and open a dialogue on that front. I hope this was helpful to you and hope to see you next time. Bye.